Greetings, friends, family, strangers, loved ones, comic nerds, superhero geeks, and pop culture enthusiasts. My name is Jeff Rowe, and we're here with another comic haul from Midtown Comics in New York, which is where I have my pull list and I get my deliveries every two weeks. I got some great feedback from the last video, so I thought I'd try a few more and see how they go. Hope you all enjoy. So, not a very big haul this week. Technically, uh, three, four, six, eight comics, seven titles. For some reason, I got two of one, and I'm not sure exactly why. I need to look into that. All right, first off, House of Slaughter 24. Another title by James Tinian, who I tend to call the hardest working man in comic books. He is busy on so many projects, I don't know how he finds the time. But this is kind of the spin-off series to Something is Killing the Children. And the titular House of Slaughter is one of the houses in the organization that kills monsters. This one being the Slaughterhouse, so you get it. Our main character that we follow through Something is Killing the Children is Erica Slaughter, a member of that house. She's one of the black masks who goes out and actually does the killing of said monsters. This is kind of a spin-off title delving more into some other relationships in the house and some conflicts and relationships with the rest of the houses in the organization. It's a really great story. Tinian does a fantastic job of world building and it's a joy to read every month. I'm a little behind. As I said in the last video, I like to get a couple issues in and then read them consecutively because if I read them month to month, I almost always forget what they're about and I have to go back and read them anyway, so. Here we are. Destro, number one. The Image Energon universe marches on. We're getting more solo titles like this released. It launched a while back with the series Void Rivals, which surprised readers with an introduction to this universe. Apparently they didn't tell anybody about it and people just thought they were reading another, you know, alien story by Robert Kirkman, writer of The Walking Dead. And they turned the page all of a sudden and there's a Transformer. And so they, they snuck this into the readers and that launched the shared universe, which consists of the Void Rivals characters, the Transformers and G.I. Joe, which this one is a part of. So last we saw Destro, he was making a deal with Cobra Commander to share resources. Cobra Commander has access to the energy source Energon, which is what powers the Transformers and he wants to trade his knowledge of that to Destro for Destro's expansive weapons and arms manufacturer. Cobra Commander has big ambitions and he needs Destro on board to make those happen. So this introduces Destro and his world and his conflict with Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander tends to think of Destro as an underling and Destro is having none of that and lets him know in no certain terms that this is a partnership, I don't answer to you. This is a really good issue. I liked it a lot. I haven't disliked anything yet from the Energon universe. Of course, I'm an 80s kid, so G.I. Joe and Transformers are near and dear to my heart. And this new launch has been great because it is the original Generation 1 Transformers. So it just, it hits that nostalgia sweet spot. Highly recommend all of these books. So far, we've got the main Transformers series running. There was a Cobra Commander limited series that's run. There was a Duke limited series. A Scarlet series just launched and we're supposed to get more titles announced as time goes on. All right, next we have William of Newbury. When I was in the podcast with Desmond filling in a few weeks ago, we talked about issue one of this book and I really enjoyed it. The art is gorgeous. The story seems like it's gonna be really interesting. And I mean, look at that face. Look at that guy, he's cute. The art is fantastic. It's all done by Michael Avalon Oming, I believe that's how you say it. I'm terrible with names, so I apologize. Wait, this is number one. I thought this was number two. Well, we're learning something together. So this is the issue I reviewed with Desmond, and it's fantastic. This is definitely worth picking up. I've said this many times, this does what a first issue needs to do, which is make you wanna read issue two. And it looks like this is gonna be an interesting one. The One Hand. This is Image Comics' dual title story right now. There's the One Hand series, and there's another series called The Six Fingers. And we are tracking down a serial killer 
through the perspective of the cop that thought he had already arrested and put away said serial killer, but this new one has emerged with the exact same patterns, motives, and all evidence points to it being the same person. The Six Fingers, on the other hand, ha, get it, is from the serial killer's point of view, as he does what he does and avoids contact with the investigator from the one hand. This is, it's hard to describe it without getting spoilery. If you like cyberpunk, neo-noir, murder mysteries, it's definitely worth checking out. I highly recommend it. Ram V is fantastic. His art and stories are always great. Do check it out. Speaking of the Energon universe, Transformers number nine. This series is in its second story arc and it's fantastic. I love it. And just a reminder, you won't really hear me say the opposite very much on these videos or hopefully in anything I do. I'm here to talk about things that I love. I have no time to talk about things that I hate. So the stuff I'm showing you here today, this is stuff I love. If I got something I didn't like, I probably wouldn't talk about it. If you have any questions about that, please leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Kevin Smith recently said after his heart attack, life's too short, man. Why waste any time talking about things you don't like? Talk about the things you love with the people you love and everyone else doesn't matter. So this is a place to enjoy comics, the art form, the style, sometimes even the commercial aspects of it. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I appreciate everyone coming along for the ride. So in Transformers 9, we get an escalation to the battle between the Autobots and the Decepticons. The Autobots and a handful of Decepticons are stranded on Earth with limited energon supply, which is of course their fuel and power. Without that, they're not going to be able to fight and they're definitely not going to be able to get home. So things are looking bleak for both sides. But in this issue, things take a little bit of a turn for the worse for our favorite Autobots because the Decepticons get a batch of reinforcements from an unexpected source. These are really good. I mean, if you're an 80s kid or older, if you love Transformers, these are definitely worth checking out. It's been really good so far. The art's super. And I mean, you get to see Shockwave suplex Optimus Prime. That's worth $3.99 alone. I mean, come on, what are you waiting for? Pick up the first trade paperback, grab the next couple issues, and you're golden. Ultimate Spider-Man. I'm absolutely loving the new Ultimate Universe, mostly because of that man right there, Jonathan Hickman. I am unapologetically biased towards his work. I love it. Just a quick recap, if you're not on board yet, which most of you should be because these sell out repeatedly. The Maker, which is the evil Reed Richards from the doomed original Ultimate Universe, which was destroyed in Hickman's Secret Wars event a few years ago, the Maker manages to get himself freed from prison, and he finds out that his memories were erased of the events of Secret Wars. He gets those back, and he's not very happy. And what he decides to do is he steals all the necessary materials and gear he needs for a little time travel slash multiversal expedition, and he decides he's going to remake his old world in the way he wants it, and that includes taking out superheroes before they ever become superheroes. So with the 616 Reed Richards archives, he learns about all the superheroes around, how they were turned into their present forms, and he's going to make sure that doesn't happen in his new universe. So when we open the Ultimate Spider-Man series, Peter Parker's a little bit older guy. He's married to Mary Jane. He's got three kids, and he seems happy. He's got his Uncle Ben, who, with J. Jonah Jameson, run the Daily Bugle. When the series opens, he gets a visit from a holographic Tony Stark telling him that he was robbed of a future that he should have had, and he's going to make sure that that gets set right. And he gives Peter two items, a stealth suit that he can wear to hide his identity, and a spider in a vial. So we have a very new, very reluctant Peter Parker now not even named as Spider-Man yet, trying to figure out his new place in the world. Again, not gonna go into too many spoilers if anyone hasn't read it, but he's involved in quite a fight with the Kingpin in this issue with the current Green Goblin. And this is a terrifying Kingpin. He beats the hell out of those two guys. This series is fantastic. The first couple issues sold out very quickly. 
the first issue, the first printing is very expensive right now. It sold out everywhere immediately and it was impossible to get. I myself was only able to get a second printing. So yes, check this out. Very good. Can't wait to see where it goes. And the new Ultimate Universe is shaping up to be fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, we've got one of my most anticipated books every month, another Jonathan Hickman masterpiece. And this book is one of those, it's very Jonathan Hickman. We're eight issues in and we're just starting to kind of figure out what's going on. The first arc was setting up a lot and Jonathan Hickman usually plays the long game. His stories are usually multi-arc journeys, and I don't think this is gonna be any different. So I can't do any better of a job describing this than what's on the inside of this issue. The powers that be and the natural order of things are the two forces that shape all of existence. Their mortal avatars and apprentices roam the earth working together in an ancient truce an uneasy alliance of science and magic. When avatar of the powers that be, and Accio, the centivar of the natural order of things, were once married but now find themselves working at cross purposes. Aiko recruited college student Mia de Maria as a protege, when then revealed to Mia that her new role would also prevent her from ever fully growing into her magical powers. To make amends, Aiko struck a deal with godly forces which restored Mia, but cost Aiko her sight. Aiko's sacrifice caused Wynn to question their service to the gods. Wynn's associate Dimitri, an envoy of the natural order of things, sought to save his parents from where they had been lost in another reality, but has yet to return. So we're introduced to a lot of new characters and new concepts, new cosmic forces in the Marvel Universe. It feels like it's setting up maybe something bigger. I don't know, maybe I'm reading into that, but we have a lot of cosmic entities in this book scheming and fighting wars with these basically human avatars. This is really good. I like this a lot. I can't wait for it to show up every month. I'm anxious to get to maybe issue 12 or 13, maybe 14 or 15 to see what really he has planned. Because another thing, we haven't been told what the G-O-D-S acronym actually stands for. They've been hyping that as a mystery that they're gonna reveal at some point. So check this out. If you like the cosmic corner of the Marvel Universe, if you like Doctor Strange, if you like comic book, interpersonal drama, check this out. Don't sleep on it. Another Jonathan Hickman masterpiece. And there we have it, folks. We're all done for this delivery. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment. You can drop me a line however you see fit. I love questions. If something I said was wrong, please let me know because I often make mistakes and I don't mind saying I was wrong. So until next time, everyone have a great day. Have a great week. Have a great life. We'll talk to you soon and make some time to read some comic books. See you later.